Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! Howdy there, friends. This is Chad Remington. Chad Remington, frontier lawyer from the frontier town called Dos Rios. Now, I guess it goes without saying that a frontier town lawyer can find more trouble 24 hours a day than any man living or dead west of Chicago. <laughs> and if this weren't enough, part of my time is taken up with the running of a small cattle ranch left to me by my late father. Matter of fact, it was while I was on my ranch that this last adventure really had its start. Now, the little law office I have, I rent from Cherokee O'Bannon, the ex-medicine man who now operates the Dos Rios livery stables. I don't know whether it's because he's afraid I may run out with the rent money, or because tagging around with me he gets to see his favorite scenery, saloons. But for one reason or other, O'Bannon is most always by my side. Well, this particular morning, Cherokee was helping me round up some strays in a far canyon on the back end of my ranch. Everything seemed to be going all right. Hi, hiya! Chad, I was thinking again. Why does a man like you, with a good law practice, bother playing nursemaid to a lot of cows? Well, to be honest about it, Cherokee, cows are like money in the bank. And their products sell for good money with milk at six cents a quart and cream at 10 cents a pint. My, my, 10 cents a pint for cream. But for a few pennies more, you can get a bottle of good bourbon. <laughs> now, don't you tell the cows that. They might start changing their product. Counselor, how is it that cream costs so much more than milk? Well, because of the labor involved, Cherokee. Cream costs more than milk because of the labor involved? Naturally, it's harder for the cows to sit on those little bottles. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy Blue Blazes, Chad, that's about the funniest remark I've ever heard you. <laughs> Chad, we're surrounded. We're being ambushed. Cherokee, you blame fool. Let that gun alone. But they're rustlers. We're being attacked. Rustlers, my eye. Can't you see who fired that shot? Don't you see who it is coming? It's old Sam from the Western Union office. Sam? Oh, I wonder what in blazes he wants. Hiya, Sam. What's up? Howdy, boys. Sorry I had to throw that shot at you. Seemed to be the only way of stopping you without chasing you another ten miles. What in the name of my grandmother's bustle is so important that you had to stop us? Well, a telegram come for you, Chad, and since it needs an immediate answer, kind of reckon I'd better bring it out to you. Here. Thanks, Sam. Well, that's one invitation I'm not going to refuse. What's one invitation? You please tell me what this is all about? Well, this telegram's from Kurt Bodie. You know, the sheriff over at Bonanza City. He says there's a big party being given day after tomorrow honoring all the peace officers of the territory, and, well, he's inviting me down as his guest. Yeah, from what I hear about Bonanza City, it's as much a city as a prairie dog's hole as a tunnel. That's a wide open, rip roaring boom town at that. I don't suppose that'll stop you from going down and attending the party with me, will it, Cherokee? Me? Attend a peace officer's party? <laughs> My dear friend, any warrants formally issued against you for selling your genuine Cherokee Indian rattlesnake oil probably have run out now because of the statute of limitations. So, <laughs> no doubt you're fairly safe. Well, you know me, Chad. I'm a party man from the word go. 
You get down there and mingle with a lot of tin badges. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> Mister, as long as your lawyer's with you, even if they do get you, they won't hit you with more than 20 years to life. Well, that's a horse of a... T what? <laughs> Come on, Cherokee. We'll bring these few head we've rounded up back to the lower meadow, and then you and I, well, we're hitting the trail for Bonanza. <laughs> I got Cherokee to Bonanza City, all right. But no matter what I did, I couldn't get him out to the party. To tell the truth, there were too many so-called attractions in the town itself, so that Cherokee wasn't too seriously tempted. Now, the affair was being held in what was known locally as the other side of the creek, which meant really the other side of the town, the wide open part of the town, the place everyone knew existed but nobody talked about. The most fashionable palace of entertainment on the other side of the creek was the somewhat flashy but expensively decorated place known as Boston Flora's Place, which Flora ran with her husband, a real high roller gambler by the name of Monty. By the time Sheriff Bodie and I got to Boston Flora's, the party was in full swing and the place was really rocking. Boston Flora stepped up to the piano to sing. The men in my life are the curse of my life. They promise and promise, still I'm nobody's wife. Fred kissed me and told me of his lasting love. His wife caught him with me. <laughs> now Fred's up above. The men in my life are the curse of my life. If a six gun don't get them, then there's always a knife. <laughs> I got Joe to the church with one foot on the sill. But he tripped me and bolted and he's running still. But he tripped me and bolted and he's running still. <laughs> Well, Chad, what do you think? How about that? Boston floor is pretty good, huh? <laughs> She's better than good, Sheriff. She's all right. All right. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> There's anything to be proud of in this bunch of flea bags we call Bonanza City. Flora is one of them. Now, when I can locate him in this mob, I'd like to have him meet Flora's husband, Monty. Monty, huh? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a gambler. Oh, he sure is. A real high roller. He's one of the coolest in the business. Oh, 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 there he is now. Hey, Monty! Monty, come on over here and meet a friend of mine. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Howdy. Well, any friend of yours is a friend of mine, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Monty. I'm Chad Remington from over in Dos Rios. I'm delighted you could be with us tonight, Remington. Oh, by the way, have you met the wife yet? No, but I certainly enjoyed her singing. Well, come on, let's go over. I'll make you acquainted with one of the greatest gals on God's green footstool. <laughs> Oh, oh, you got a treat in store for you, Chad, a real treat. <laughs> hey, say, baby, baby, I want to make you acquainted with a friend of the sheriff's, Mr. Remington. How do you do, Mr. Remington? So nice that you were able to come. Well, what's the matter, Remington? You look like your eyes are going to pop out of your head. <laughs> well, I don't think I've seen that many diamonds all at once since the night I attended the opera in New Orleans. My two weaknesses, Mr. Remington. My husband and diamonds. Well, <laughs> I've only got one weakness, Flora. And I don't mind it. Uh. Gee, a horse of fast mule, a stick up. Senores, you will just stand where you are now, huh? I do not like to spoil fiesta, but if somebody moves, there's going to be somebody dead. And he's not going to be me. You greasy devil. You got your nerve coming in here. <laughs> see, see, Senor Monte. And I have more than my nerve when I leave. First, we start with all this diamond jewelry that your wife, she wear, huh? What? Don't give them to him, Flora. Senor, if she no give the jewelry to me, I no shoot her. I kill you. Okay, Cavaliero. Marty may not look like much, but he's worth more than the rocks to me. Here. <laughs> gracias, senor. Mil gracias. And now that I have the jewelry, I take up collection of cash. We're going to start with you, Sheriff. Eh? Oh, 
Why, you <laughs> low dog? Nah, 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 Sheriff. Just for a little joke, I also going to take your badge. <laughs> Senor? Well, there's not much in my pocketbook, but here it is. Uh, bueno, bueno. Like your Americano say, every little bitch he can. Huh? <laughs> you other people, I shall walk by you slowly. When I do, just drop all you got into sombrero, huh? Gracias, gracias, caballeros y caballeras. Because I do not want you to spoil your fun by running outside and chasing me. <laughs> I think I shoot out the lights before I go. Come on! I guess there were more people hurt trying to get out of Boston Flora's inky black parlor than would have been hurt if the lone bandit had fired his gun. But enough of us made our horses and lit out after him to make the chase worthwhile. We circled around through Santa Fe Street, cut through Nugget Alley, and that brought us face to face with the bridge over the creek. That is, face to face with what was left of the bridge. Because there was no question about it, the bridge was down. All right. Hold it, man. Hold it. Rain up. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Isn't there a dam upstream by the smelter, Sheriff? We can get across that. Yeah, come on. Let's go before that low-down sneak of no good gets away. Yeah, now, wait a minute, Monty. I've been thinking. Now, this is no time to think, Sheriff. We've got to get after that cuss before he gets... Now, hold on there, Chad. We ain't going after that cuss. What? what? What do you mean? You're not going after him? Well, stop and figure it out yourself. We go after him and get in town on the other side of the creek. Then we got to admit what happened. That one solitary south of the border varmint stuck up a sheriff, two marshals, and half a dozen deputies and got away with it. Why, you bald-headed old fossil. Mm. No one's stealing my wife's jewelry and going scot-free. Who said anything about him going scot-free? We got a good look at him. And between us, being most every lawman for 50 miles around... We'll catch up with him sooner or later. Kurt, are you serious? I sure am, Chad. What's well, worth a few thousand dollars we lost not to make fools of ourselves? I'll be blamed if me and Flora are going to suffer because you're a bunch of knotheads. I'm going to cross that creek if I have to swim it myself. Doggone it, Monty. Now, don't go flying off the handle. Get, get, you, get your hands off of me and let go. Here. Sheriff, if Monty wants to go, you've got no right to stop him. You keep out of this, Chad. You don't live here like we do. Sheriff, are you going to let me go? You're doggone right I'm not. Okay, then. Monty, that was a mistake hitting the sheriff with that horseshoe ring on your hand. Well, it serves the old goat right. And I got an idea that this will serve you right. Hey, you. Oh, get you want some, huh? All right. Oh. Oh. Monty, oh. you ought to exercise your fingers oh. less and your arms more. Oh. 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 All right, fellas. Let's take this overdressed gambler back to his wife. We're not going to catch the gent who pulled that hold up tonight. But we can sure do a lot of talking over. We'll return to the second act of Lady Luck, our exciting frontier town adventure, in just a few moments. Frontier Town. Well, there's no use alibying now. The sheriff, the marshals, the deputies, and the Frontier Town lawyer had all been caught flat-footed by a mighty clever crook. Or was it crooks? Somehow, when I started to get my senses together again, it didn't seem that just one man, all alone, could have conceived that scheme and done all of the execution that was necessary. 
So, after getting back to the main part of town, going into four saloons and finding Cherokee in the fifth, Cherokee, the sheriff, and I put our heads together down at the sheriff's office. By the whiskers of Walter's Uncle Willie Chad, you'll pardon my levity, but this is really a good one. <laughs> the whole law for two counties around robbed of their valuable possessions. Yeah, go on and laugh, Cherokee. But I'll get that crook it takes me to my dying day. <laughs> And then admitting what happened tonight? Well, it's not just me and the other boys alone. Some of the other men who were there, like the mayor, they told their wives they was going to odd fellas' meeting. Wouldn't be good for the town to have that come out either. <laughs> well, I'm not a married man, sure, but I can see what you mean. Mm. Well, how are you going to stop it from getting out? This gambler you told me about, this Monty, he isn't going to stop screaming his head off. I think he's done all of his screaming for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty hard for a man to scream through a face that's all bandaged up with court plaster. <laughs> you sure knocked the daylights out of him, Chad. Yeah, and I'm sorry I did. Sorry? I wonder if Monty really would have crossed the creek if we'd let him. But you just got through saying... I mean, wasn't he the one Yes, who... he was the one who yelled his head off. But you know, it isn't always the man who screams loudest who's hurt most. Uh, what you mean, Chad? Well, I don't mean to sound like a school teacher, but... Don't either one of you remember the children's story about the man who yelled wolf? Well, of course I remember it. Yeah. Frankly, I don't get the connection. Well, neither do I, Cherokee. Not at the moment. But uh, well, let's go back over everything that happened, step by step. Chad, I tell you, it's as plain as a nose on your face. Or at least on Cherokee's face. Is it? Then how do you account for the bridge being conveniently cut down? Why, it's because the... He, he, why, why, somebody must have... Uh, how did it happen? Exactly. Mm. You and I had crossed the bridge not half an hour before, and it seemed to be all right. But what's that got to do with Monty yelling wolf, wolf? Well, it may be more like fox, fox than wolf, wolf. Yeah, more like skunk, skunk, if you ask me. Dirty robin polecat. <laughs> Your remarks are immaterial, irrelevant, and probably true. But let's look at the facts. Who organized this party of appreciation for the peace officers? Why, he told you before, Boston Flora and her husband. Right. Now, granting for a moment that Flora and Monty had planned the little affair, don't you think they knew beforehand that the sheriff and the marshals wouldn't want to publicly admit they'd been made fools of? Yeah, but then why would Monty get in a fight with me and risk going to jail because he wanted to follow the crook? Because you couldn't have put him in jail for wanting to do what you should have done. In fact, if he were so inclined, he could probably put you in jail for malfeasance in office. Great jumping gumdrops. I never thought of that. But him and his women still had her jewelry stolen, and well, there ain't no denying that. Sheriff's right, Chad. And what's more, who was the crook? No one's ever seen him in Bonanza City before. Probably just come up across the Rio Grande. You're convinced he's a Mexican, aren't you, Sheriff? Well, naturally, I... Huh? You gonna tell me he ain't a Mexican? Well, the only Mexicans I ever heard talk and act like that were in stage plays. In stage plays? You heard me, O'Bannon. If I'm not mistaken, there's a traveling tent show about to open in Bonanza City this week. Well, I'll be kicked by a muley cow. You mean you think Monty and Flory hired this actor and the whole thing was a put-up job? The whole thing, including cutting down the bridge. But great sakes alive, Chad. It's loco. It's wild. How do you ever expect to prove a thing like that? By taking advantage of the fact that Cherokee wasn't over at Boston Flora's with us earlier this evening. Now, hold on there, Chad. You think you're going to make a guinea pig out of me and... Well, uh... making a guinea pig out of you won't be too hard, Cherokee. The part that's going to take a bit of doing is turning Monty and Boston Flora into a pair of jailbirds. <laughs> Cherokee squirmed and wriggled and bucked like a sunfishing bronc. But with enough money in his jeans to cut a fancy figure at Boston Flora's bar, next afternoon found Cherokee on the other side of the creek, leaning across the mahogany and... Here you are, boy. Set him up for the house. <laughs> Honey, don't you think it's time the house sets him up for you? Uh, madam, I'm not a man to turn down a tin roof. But at the same time, I'm not a man to quibble over a few measly dollars. I am providently, amply provided with the wherewithal to enjoy myself. 
If you would be gracious enough to join me, I'd like to buy you some champagne. I... I don't mind if you do. Charlie, bring a bottle of Pomeroy over to the table by the window. Come on. It's you and I sit down. Oh, what's the matter? Why are you staring at me? It's your get-up. You don't look like a prospector or a miner. My dear lady, there's a good reason for that. I'm not a prospector or a miner. Well, most of the men around here with money get it out of the mines. Where do you get yours? Madam, I'm a salesman. A salesman? A jewelry salesman. Now, don't ask me where I get my little baubles. <laughs> Why, some of them come from Tiffany's in New York. I don't get you. I don't get you at all. Well, I've found that there are a certain group of ladies working in the mining camps here in the West who wish to put their, uh, uh, their savings in commodities like fine diamonds, which never depreciates in value, and, well, they have an eye toward a rainy day. For example, a woman of your beauty and talent should own jewelry. Wait a minute. Marty? Marty, come over and sit down. What is it, Flora? Well, what's on your mind? He says he's a jewelry salesman. Oh? Uh -huh. Friend, I can sell you flawless diamonds at less than 50 cents on the dollar. Oh, you can, huh? Now, uh, where do you pick up bargains like that? Well, let's, let's just say that I, uh... Well, let's just say that I picked them up. Uh, what are you, a fence? <laughs> Crudely, yes. You want a deal? Well, Monty... No, thanks. But, Monty, I... Not today, Flora. But I... Oh, never mind. Sorry I asked you at all, Monty. Uh, stop wasting time on that overdressed saddle bum. It's time for you to sing a song. <laughs> Mister, I'm afraid I've played my cards too fast. Come back tonight and bring some of the jewelry with you. I'll handle Monty. Why? Have the stuff with you and be here at 10 o'clock. Because you and I are going to do business. But don't you see, Chad, that you were wrong? Monty wouldn't even listen to buying her any jewelry. Which only proves that Monty thinks Flora has enough jewelry already. Huh? And if Flora has enough jewelry already, the jewelry she allegedly lost last night wasn't lost. But Billy Blue blazes, Chad. Why did Flora tell me to come back tonight at 10 and bring the jewelry with me? Because Flora has more brains than you have and more brains than Monty has. In fact, Mr. O'Bannon, I'm convinced that Flora has more brains than you and Monty have put together. Now do you get it, Monty? Now do you see what I'm up to? <laughs> Baby, I gotta hand it to you. You're the only woman I know who can figure out how to have your cake and eat it, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Anytime she wants, she can come back and join my tent show. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. And I'm doing all right right here. Uh. Now, you understand everything, Tony, don't you? <laughs> you seem to forget your old partner, baby. I'm the quickest study in show business. And when I meet this jewelry salesman outside and stick this gun in his ribs and I say... Senor, you put the hands up quick, eh? <laughs> You'll have his diamonds and your money back all at the same time. <laughs> the great part of it is, the only squawk the sucker will have won't be about his diamonds. And uh, all he'll be able to do is run to the sheriff and holler about his money. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't imagine that stone-headed sheriff's going to do anything about that. Because he might be afraid we'd tell what suckers we made of the lot of them last night. Yeah, what? what? Who was the sucker? Cherokee, keep an eye on the outside. Right you are, Chad. Leave it to me. What are you up to, anyhow, Sheriff? I'm up to throwing the three of you in the calaboose, that's what. We heard every word you said. Did you know it's bad manners to point at a lady with a gun? Yeah, all right, quit stalling, Flora. Let's get going. Why, of course, Sheriff, if you say... Money, come on! Let go of her before I... Sheriff, get on here, you... Well, 
Nice going, Sheriff. I see you got the so-called actor. Well, what about me? Didn't I get my man? Or a woman? <laughs> what did you hit her with? A chair? Now, Chad, for shame. You know I'm too much of a gentleman to hit a woman with a chair. I hit her with something soft. <laughs> I hit her with an upholstered sofa. <laughs> Cherokee, Sheriff Bodie, and I, and all the lawmen for two counties around certainly owe you a vote of thanks for your help in getting the goods on Flora the Phony, the Boston bad woman. Now your thanks be hanged. After all I went through, I would imagine that somebody, at least, would offer to buy me a bottle of bourbon. Oh, Bannon, don't you realize you're going to come to a premature death with all that bourbon you take on board? Ah, that's absolutely ridiculous. Bourbon's the safest drink in the world. It's scotch is dangerous. It is, O'Bannon? And how do you figure that? <laughs> Why, Chad, don't you see? A man who drinks scotch is apt to end up getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Supervision and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. Hollywood.